In this worked example, we're going to build this popular monopole design referenced elsewhere on the Things Network site. It's popular because it's small, simple to build, and is easy to match into 50 ohm cable. So simple problems can be avoided. If you touch a blank NEC file into the model subdirectory of the NEC directory, well, in Windows, this means opening Notepad and saving a blank file into the model subdirectory of the 4NEC2 program. Mine is here for the moment. But the two important points are to provide a full name for your file with a .NEC extension and select all files from this pull-down, then save. Now start 4NEC2 and the splash screen appears, followed by the main window from which everything is launched. There are two important configuration changes that need to be made. Click Settings and ensure that the NEC editor New is selected. This provides the easiest introduction into antenna import. And secondly, click Settings again to ensure that auto segmentation is enabled. You can disable it and re-enable it if you wish, which provides you with the opportunity to enter the number of segments per half wavelength. This is a speed versus accuracy trade-off, and I've just entered 50 in my example. We are now ready to enter the antenna design. Using the mouse, go to File Open In Out NEC File, or just use the Control O shortcut, and select the blank file you made with Notepad. We're all starting with a clean sheet here. The file name appears in the main window, and the geometry window opens with just the origin and the dimensional axes shown. Left mouse clicking into this screen moves it around pleasingly. Now we need to enter the antenna design. At its simplest, it's just five rods, for the moment all centred at the origin. The vertical quarter wave monopole and four radials pointing down at 45 degrees. Let's begin by assuming that the radials are at right angles and are all the same length as the monopole. Use edit input.nec file or the F6 shortcut to open a new editor window. Note that it's headed here for NEC2 edit. It is a separate window. It appears in the style of a spreadsheet where we enter our design. The tabs at the top are Symbol, Geometry, Source Load, Frequency Ground, Others and Comment. Jump straight to the comment and describe what is going on here for later. Click on Frequency Ground and picking any frequency at random just enter 868.5. Our environment here is going to be the simplest in this first demonstration, free space. Now press save in the edit window. This saves and causes the main window to update. Here we see the frequency has been updated and it's also usefully entered the wavelength as 0.345 meters. That's helpful. In fact, we can now swap back to the edit window and into symbol, we can enter my wavelength equals 0.345. All of the values are in meters and monopole equals my wavelength divided by 4. We can also add radials equals my wavelength divided by 4. One of the idiosyncrasies mentioned before appears here as the first line always disappears but can be seen again by pressing this reset at the origin. Now add rad, the name for the radius of the wire I'm going to use, and height for the height of the antenna. We'll just set it to zero for the moment. File, save or control S to avoid re-entry. Finally, to geometry. Here we simply describe each element in our antenna on a separate line. The order and direction does not matter, nor does the apparent short circuit at the origin. Follow each element through. Select wire from the pull down. Tag is just a unique number for each element. Segments does not matter here, as anything entered is going to be overwritten by the automatic segments option we selected earlier. And here come the coordinates of each wire. They all start at the origin, X1, Y1 and Z1 are all zero. The same for the other end, apart from, of course, that it projects vertically and ends at monopole above the origin in the Z plane. The other wires project out on each axis, plus or minus in each direction, all with a wire's radius rad at the moment. Save and then F3 to see the creation in the geometry screen. Drag using the left and right mouse buttons to move around, page up and page down to move in and out and click view for the rest of the totally forgettable options. Under show, click on tag numbers and segments to display how the antenna has been constructed. This is good, although the vertical scaling appears to be a little foreshortened. Now for the exciting bit. Do you see what I did there? We need to excite this antenna and do this by entering the source tab. 
Select source voltage and tag 1. I'm not sure where to apply the power. Let's get it entirely in the wrong place at the end of the monopole. Tap through the other options of unitary values for the moment. And save. Now, click on this green calculate button, generate, or F7 if you prefer, and this window opens. Let's do far field. An array of windows flash, appear, and disappear. Digging down, you can see this polar diagram in the vertical and horizontal planes. Press spacebar to switch between the two options. In the horizontal plane, looking down from above onto the top of our monopole, we see that the signal is transmitted in all directions equally. But vertically, looking from a distance at the side, we can see two lobes. The aerial is pumping out power like a donut into space. We can perhaps see a little more clearly by switching to F3, the geometry screen. Turning the segments on and off for clarity. Play with this geometry option as all of the currents and voltages are visible, along with the phases. The one thing I've noticed here is this small red circle. This is where the wire is connected to the antenna, and obviously on the wrong place on the monopole. Jump back into source and changing this, let's say 2%. Save, and now recalculate. All seems well. Now, let's slope the radials downwards. This is easier than it sounds. Everything is centred around the origin. Rather than force the angle as a constant into the design, let's use a variable radial angle, or shorten it to simply rad ang. Make a variable for the cos and the sine of the angles. Using tree, let's go back and send all of the z coordinates down by the sine, and carefully adjust the cos values plus or minus on each axis. Save and plot. There are the outputs. Going back to settings, predefined frequencies. I've been playing with this, so I already have a set of values here. It covers the range 700 megahertz to a gigahertz in 25 megahertz steps. Now, when we do a plot, select sweep and these graphs are revealed. Now we can go around the loop one more time and make some improvements. Let's add height to the model and a ground plane. Two other things. We can add velocity factor to improve the model yet further. Let's assume 95% for the moment. And the radials can be 10 to 12% longer than the monopole. So putting in these details to the model, we achieve this. I hope this was useful. The next project will be three and five element collinear arrays.